Hi. Uh, recently, I've posted a few pictures of some resin water effect bases that I've been doing. Uh, I'm in no way an expert, just experimenting as I go. I've done a few over the last 12 months or so, made lots of mistakes. Um, a few people have asked me to put together a bit of a tutorial. Uh, here we go. Uh, so what you're looking at first is the um, is the basic the base itself. So you got your base, got a bit of cork. Um, so I just buy the cork, buy tiles from a local hardware store, break them all up into little bits, size bases, um, and and then just glue them down. Um, I I use liquid nails to hold them down. Uh, I found that's probably the easiest one. Now you'll notice the ones on the side there. I've got a bit of a black edge to them, so when I glued them down, I um, glued them over the edge and pinned them in. Uh, add a bit of detail to the bases. I've just got a skull pack from Citadel. I reckon it's one of the best things they've got. I love all the skulls in here and quite often use those skulls on uh, on my modelling and stuff. Uh, on some of the bases, you notice I've got some like grass tufts um, in coming out of the water there. Uh, I'm not great with all that sort of stuff, but <laughs> all I did, I just had some old brushes. So I just cut them off, uh, cut the bristles off and, uh, and glued them together as a bit of a grass piece and put them in and it worked for me. So... I mean, the brushes you buy a mouldy pack for about two bucks at the local store, cheap as, and um, and yeah. So I just cut I, once they're dead, I just cut them off and use them as grass. Um, I'm going to be doing a big batch here, so I'm doing a whole lot of bases for an upcoming squig army. I'm doing so I'm actually doing 55 bases all in one hit. So two large ones, two medium ones, uh, and then about 50 smaller ones. Um, so you can see here that I've prepped them all. So I've got the cork, uh, used a bit of texture from Citadel, uh, and then just added some colouring, some dry brush, and some uh, and some colours. The the what you see the blue part is the water part that's going to be the underneath the resin. So that's the part you want to colour uh, according to what colour you want the the resin water effect to look like. Uh, some of you may have seen the green ones I've been doing for my Skaven uh, on my uh, websites as well, but these ones are going to be the water with the blue ones. So what we're going to do now here is we're going to just wrap some uh, edging around the bases, um, which is what we're going to be using to frame the pores. Now I've used a bit of a black edge on the back here. Initially I tried to sort of wrap it to the black edge. I didn't really like the effect. Um, so I'm just going to do a full wrap. And even though the back of it's black, um, you know, it still looks like a back edge to the base, which is okay. So I'm just using polystyrene sheets. I've tried a few bits and pieces, trying to experiment what works best. Um, I found these at the local hobby store. Uh, so I know I just cut them up to size, which is pretty good. So it works well. Uh, if Obviously, if you're doing a square base, it's a little bit different, but these are all round. So what I'm going to do is I've just cut them to size, pre-cut them to size. I use a bit of Tamiya tape to hold it all in and help seal it. I've just found that's pretty good tape to use. It seals well, and it's pretty easy to use because it just tears in your hand. Uh, so we're going to just first do the initial wrap. What you notice is there's a bit of an overlap there, which will create a slight lip when you do your pour. Um, but I haven't really found that a problem. I just do it on the back. You can always shave it a little bit before you fix it up later on. Um, really, for me, I, I'm not too worried about it. If you are, you might want to investigate how you can see a little bit better to uh, get rid of that join so that it doesn't come through on your resin pour later on. Uh, nice tight fit, so I'm making sure there's no gaps in between the um, the outside and the actual base itself. I'm just going to put a piece of uh, holding tape there just to keep it in, in place. And then all I do is I just grab small bits and just work my way around the edge. And all I'm doing is sealing it in. As I'm doing it, I'm just going to check that I haven't got any gaps um, and that it's keeping a nice tight, uh, tight hold on the base. Sometimes it'll slip a little bit. You just got to watch that uh, and make sure it comes back and, um, and it's nice and tight because if you Obviously, if you don't get that tight hold there, uh, you're going to get some uh, leaks later on, which is exactly which is really what we don't want. Um, the Tamiya tape is really good at sealing it in. Uh, I haven't had any real issues initially when I was doing it. I had a few, and I've had a couple of leaks uh, over time. Um, it's just learning by mistake, I suppose. As you can see there, you can see the base has slipped a little bit on, on the base there. So I'm just going to push it down, uh, make sure it's nice and tight. And yep, just make as I'm working around, just little bits, just because obviously we're working around and just keeping that nice tight seal all the way around the edge there. That's probably the most important part of, of all of this prep, because uh, if you don't get that seal right, it's obviously it's just going to leak through and you've stuffed it. It's not going to work out much at all. So working around all the way around the edge, make sure we've got that nice tight seal.
and there we go i've done a nice seal all the way around the bottom there just making sure it's all tucked in nice and tight and then i just grab some blue tack and what i do is i just pre-roll this one obviously i just work it around the edges there and then I just wrap it, tuck it in and wrap it in and push it in. And what that does, that just works back up and makes sure the, um, the Tamiya tape's nice and tightly sealed um, and just reduces any likelihood of leaks later on. Um, I've had occasions where it's leaked slightly and the blue tack's been enough to hold it back. So uh, I just tuck that blue tack in there around the insides, around the outsides, nice and tight. Have a look at it, check at it. When you're pushing it down, you just got to make sure that it's level as well. So um, and there you go, wrapped, ready to pour. So nice tight seal and ready for it. So there's a few different resin water products out there. I use AK Interactive. In no way am I promoting them. Uh, it's just what I've used. I'm sure there's others which are just as good or better. Um, this just happens to be the one that's available to me and it's worked all right for me. So what we're going to do here, I'm just going to show you how I mix and just do a pour. Uh, it's a two-part epoxy resin uh, i'm not really parfait and what all that sort of stuff means i just go with what the box tells me to do um, and like i said i've used this a couple of times and never had any real problems with it so i just go it comes with the two bottles um, which you've got to mix obviously together to get your resin to go hard um, and what i like about it too is it actually includes um, some syringes which you'll see there on the left there i also pick a shade for the coloring i'm going to use uh, as i said this one's going to be blue because uh, i'm going for the blue water there just grab some of the first part, measure it out. I'm going to be doing quite a few bases here in one hit, so I'm going to do. I'm doing, going to be doing quite a big mix. Um, you, you, your risks are obviously the more you put in it, the, the you risk some of it not mixing quite right. Uh, so when you're starting out, just initially stick with small bits. Uh, I'm taking, I'm just going to go all out and just do a big pour. So what I'm looking at there, the amount of mixing there should do about 30 of those small bases, I think is what I'm estimating here. Um, sometimes I get too much in there and I've got left over with nothing to do with it, which is unfortunate. And sometimes you're just a little bit short, but yeah, it's all just guesswork really, unless you're, uh, and once you, you know, just from time, you just get a bit, a bit of an idea how much you're going to need. I'm obviously I'm pouring in the second part of the two part epoxy resin mix it goes in there and i just grab a toothpick i just use a toothpick now spend some time mixing making sure it's well mixed uh, get the bubbles out of it i'm going to add my color in here now i learned the hard way don't add too much color all you really need is a couple of a couple of drops um, not necessarily the easiest thing to drop out slightly but that's so what we've got two, three, three, four drops there for all of that. So if you were just doing a single mix, probably one drop of it, um, two drops at the most would be enough to sort of mix your colouring into it. You really just want a slight tint, otherwise you start losing the uh, the see-through effect. So sit there and just mix it all in. Take your time, get rid of the bubbles out of it all, get that colour well and truly mixed in. As you can see, you can see the slight tint there. Now that's just reinforcing the colour that I've already painted the bases. Uh, it's not really colouring the base itself because I've already painted it the blue that I want. It's just giving that slight blue tint to the resin. So when you're looking at it from a different angle, uh, you're still getting that slight colour. Realistically, if you didn't want to pour the colour, mix the colour in, you could just do it clear and just rely on the colour underneath to um, to come through and, and, and produce the colour effect it is you're after. Uh, like I said, I just tint in a little bit um, and it just gives it a slight, it increases the effect a bit. It looks, it was pretty good with the green. Um, and I said, I'm quite happy with the way the blues work out as well. I've done red with some blood as well. Um, that looks pretty cool too. Got a mix. As you can see, most of the bubbles are out of it, which is pretty cool. Sometimes you get a little bit of a bubble pop when you're doing your pour and stuff, and that's fine. And then I just pour it into the mould, just taking my time very, very carefully. So I pour it in. Checking, making sure there's no leaks, not pouring out, which is great. And just using the toothpick just to help guide it around the edges as it's quite a small base. 
uh, I'm just doing just tucking sort of tucking it into the little gaps and making sure it's filling in all the all the spots. And I'm just working around the edges there, just make get making sure I haven't got any air bubbles around the edges and that none have come through. Tucking a bit more there, just making sure I'm getting the height that I want. It will shrink a little bit on bases this size, not a real lot. Uh, your bigger bases, perhaps a little bit more, um, but as it dries, it shrinks it just a touch. So um, just remember that as you're doing it. But also we're going to top it up with a second pour later on. Uh, it's not really too much of an issue. I found on the bases, really small bases, there's not much shrink at, it at all. Uh, what you'll notice is as I poured there, you can see the bit of the lip forming against the side there. Um, that's not really too much of an issue because we're going to fix that up after it's uh, after it's set and then do a second pour. Uh, so there we go. We've poured the resin in, and she now we just leave it to dry. And I usually leave mine for about uh, 24 hours, usually depending on your weather. Humidity obviously all affects it. Um, what I'm showing you there is I'm going to do more than just the one base there. So as I wrap up here, um, I'm going to go and continue pouring the rest of those bases, and then I leave them to dry. And so what we're looking at here is the is the dried base. Um, so she's all set, as you can see, not too much shrinkage there, which is pretty good. Pull the blue tack off, didn't get any leakage, which is great. So I've got a good seal on that base. Uh, I think doing the 55 bases I've done, I had two that had a slight leak, not much at all. The blue tack caught it, so that wasn't really a problem at all. I think that's pretty good out of 50 odd bases, only getting two with a little bit of a, a seepage. Uh, so just pull the blue tack out. Nice and easy. I'm going to pull the tape off. Now, the two that had seepage, the tape, like it usually just comes away with the tape as well. So if there's a little bit left, I just cut it later on. But um, I didn't have too much of a problem at all. Just get rid of this tape. Now, the great thing around these, um, the edging I'm using is I can reuse these. So this is the second time I've used this one on these bases. Um, so because of the product, what it is, it's reusable. So you can just, once you've peeled it off and, uh, and clean it up, you can use it on another base, which is great. So you just peel it away, nice and slow, just checking. Um, just when you first start peeling, just make sure it's not pulling with it. If it is, it hasn't dried enough and you just need to leave it a little bit longer. Uh, and, um, and then what I'm, now to get rid of that edge, like that edge that sort of pulls up against the side there, I just grab a knife. I'm just going to do a nice solid, solid cut, bring it down. I'm doing it at a bit of an angle. Um, not too fast about how it looks because we're going to clean it up with a second pour in a minute. So I'm just getting rid of that lip. Uh, you probably shouldn't cut towards your thumb. I keep on getting told that. I keep on cutting myself. You're supposed to cut away from your thumb. Uh, have old habits die hard, I suppose. Um, you may see occasionally I have a band aid on my thumb because I slipped and cut myself. So. Um, yeah, I don't recommend you cutting towards your thumb, even though that's what I'm showing you. Get around there, try and make it a bit level. Don't stress too much because it is water, so it doesn't have to be perfectly level. What I'm trying to do is, though, is get the level a little bit below the cork base I've done there. So as I'm cutting around the edge there, I'm just trying to get it at least level, a little bit lower than the cork because we're going to do a second sort of uh, top up pour just to round off that edge. What you'll also notice is that the, the material I've used has sort of gone, given a bit of a satin edge to it. Um, it's not really giving me the, the clear water look I want as you can see on this second base here. But we're going to fix that up in a second so that we get that clear, we'll get rid of that, res that satiny sort of surface without too much of a hassle at all. Um, so we'll, uh, that's going to be the next step and we'll fix all that up and round off the top there as well. So that's what our second pour is all about. So here we are, second pour, I've pre-mixed just a bit of clear. And what I'm going to use, I'm just going to use a paintbrush. So I buy um, really cheap paintbrushes um, from the uh, cheap stores, like two bucks for 10 brushes or something like that. Not a problem at all. You're going to throw it away afterwards, but I do anyway. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to paint a nice solid coat of the resin, clear resin around the edge. And that's just going to give it a nice seal. And it's also going to get rid of that satiny look we had there and make it all nice and clear. So you can see already that it's cleared it up. Not a problem at all. Be generous because it'll just it'll even itself out. Not a problem at all. It worked away all the way around the base. 
and you can see already that the statin looks gone and it's got a nice clear. I'm just checking to make sure I haven't missed any spots. I'm going to grab a bit of blue tack. Now I need to do the blue tack because you want to lift it off the surface. You're going to leave it to dry on because otherwise it'll seal to the um, seal to the whatever it is you're working on. So by putting just putting a bit of blue tack down, um, you can I use paint pots for bigger ones, but for the smaller ones, a bit of blue tack. Make sure she's level. Just lift it off so that if he, she drips or whatever, she's not going to seal. Just getting that level right because what I'm going to do now is just use that brush and just put a bit around the top there. So I'm just dripping it on and just yeah, nice and generous and just covering where I did the cut and it's just creating a nice rounded lip around the edge of the base. So it's topped up, topping up the top surface and it's me make it's um, joining the top to the sides which I've just painted as well. So I'm not going to see any difference between the um, the two resin pores at all. I'm just going around the edge, just covering the bit that I've cut off, and just giving it a nice coat just to round it off. Making sure I've got all the bits, checking for some drips, and there we go. She's ready to go. So she's going to take another 12 to 24 to dry properly um, before she's ready to use. She, I'm saying she, before the base is ready to use, um, and that should come up nice. Uh, so moving on, what you can see here now, I've done all 50 odd bases. So I've just sat, sat them on their blue tack and uh, just done their topping up edging. Not perfect, like I said, I'm not a uh, professional tool at all. I'm just a home amateur, just doing, just enjoying the hobby. And I've gone along and rounded up, rounded them all up. You can see they're all clear around the sides now. You know, it's not perfect cuts, perfect edges. I'm not too worried. It's great for uh, what I've got. There's my two medium ones. I love the skull effect coming through the side of all the skulls. There's my two big ones, which I use some leftover serifrom heads. And there you go, water effect resin bases.